Please don't tell me he's about to do what I think he's gonna do. I'm not sure I wanna watch this part. There's just scatter radiation all over the place as soon as he starts this up. I don't know what they're doing. Welcome back to my channel, everybody. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini. I'm a radiologist doing my final year of training in interventional radiology in New York City. On today's video, we are going to be discussing a video that was recently sent to me of a couple of friends who decided to make their own homemade x-ray gun. You heard that right. We're gonna watch this video and uh, get a radiologist's perspective on the whole thing. So. Let's go. Now, just looking at the start of this video, it it just looks funny to me. I, I don't know what's happening here, but we'll see. We'll see. In this video, we're gonna show you the real power of the X-ray gun that we have assembled. Let's go, guys. Awesome. Move them. This time we are well prepared. We have a lead set of armor. So if that is in fact made of lead, I'm pretty impressed with their uh, ingenuity. They are covering all the vital parts, including the genitals and also the trunk, which is good. And they also have a little hat on the head, which I don't really know what that is. There's a super modern multiplier in oil. I had to find this one. It's an ancient transformer from a lamp TV. Imagine that. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know. I think the photo multiplier tubes is a way of multiplying power. I'm not too sure on the uh, electrical engineering aspect of this whole thing. Safety is everything. We are insulating the third multiplier. Now we see that this wire is not insulated well. Here, from this side and that side. I'm actually pretty impressed so far because it looks like he has some sort of training in electrical engineering or something. Uh, he knows more than I would trying to put this together. Now I can turn it on and enjoy the rays of good. <laughs> we don't need a saw. He's calling the x-rays the rays of good. They're a little too lackadaisical about building an x-ray gun here. It's kind of worrying me, so we'll see where this goes. And due to high voltage, the electrons in this tube started moving at crazy speed. And they're hitting the anode. There it is. So that's how the deadly rays of good come from it. So basically he's saying he's describing an x-ray tube. He has this huge power bank that grows through this photomultiplier tube. It heats up the cathode, which is where all the electrons kind of come off of, but it gets so hot it emits electrons off of the cathode. Electrons hit the anode, which is made of usually tungsten. X-rays are emitted and go into a certain direction, usually pointed downwards towards the patient. And that's how x-rays are developed. Let's get down to experiments. Wearing this armor, I feel completely safe. <laughs> I love how he said he's, wear he's wearing armor, homemade armor around his chest and he feels completely safe standing 10 centimeters from this homemade x-ray machine that has no housing on it, which means there's nothing capturing the x-rays, which means there's just scatter radiation all over the place as soon as he starts this up. I'm afraid to be electrocuted. Why nothing happened? Please nobody try this at home. I have to start by saying that. Is it blowing? So I guess they were successful on this extra machine the first time they turned it on. However, again, like I said, he has just scatter radiation going throughout the entire room, affecting the cameraman, whoever else is in there, and especially him who's standing right next to the x-ray tube. Also, x-rays are usually taken in milliseconds. They're not just held in the on position like a flora machine would be. So you're just constantly emitting radiation that whole like 10 seconds he was doing that. It was a feeling, I felt thousands of needles were kind of touching my body, slightly like. So that's already worrying me that he's getting like a pins and needle feeling when he has the extra machine on and he's standing like a couple of feet away from it. Now we're going to carry out one of the most dangerous experiments. I love how this is the dangerous experiment, not everything we've seen so far. He has no radiation goggles, but I guess his chest, head, well part of the top of his head is covered, but his eyes are not covered, his chest and his genitals are covered, so I guess, sort of, okay. All tricks performed by professionals, and for the sake of science. Please don't tell me he's about to do what I think he's gonna do. I'm not sure I want to watch this part. I felt the small charges tingling. And when I turned it off, the current got on me. That's normal. 
Turn it off. So they're experiencing some sort of interference here causing static electricity or electricity elsewhere coming off of this machine that they made and affecting them while trying to take a homemade x-ray of their hand. Working. So at this point, he has no protection on him and his actual, his genitals are at the same level of the x-ray machine, which clearly he does not care about. Oh, I knew that. The stupidity in this video is next level. The most dangerous thing, never try it. Film that. I'm terrified. Imagine making a homemade x-ray machine and then testing it out on your own hand. First is simplest, second is modern, and the third is the best. It can measure up to 100 rangans, the most powerful radiation. Keep in mind here, he's measuring just radiation in the atmosphere surrounding this machine, which is everything I'm talking about. There's a ton of scatter radiation being produced by this x-ray because normal x-rays are produced in a housing that basically streamline the x-rays down in one direction and they're not just going all over the room. Let's go. So what they're doing here is basically measuring the distance from the x-ray machine to see the radiation difference and this should follow the inverse square law. And for those of you who don't know what the inverse square law is, it's something we use every single day practicing radiology. It describes the dose reduction as the distance from the x-ray actually increases. So if we increase our distance from the x-ray source by a factor of 2, our dose is reduced by a factor of 4. Whenever we're doing a higher radiation angiogram or digital subtraction angiogram, I usually take two steps backwards, which means my radiation is likely decreased by a factor of four with each big step. Comparatively, if you were right near the x-ray source like this guy has been the whole time, he experiences the entire radiation dose almost. I'm curious to see how much radiation they're producing here. It was nine million microrangas per hour. What? This one showed it. It was off scale. Nine million, joking? 10 times more than that bucket. So nine rankings an hour at three meters is pretty alarming. We usually use millisieverts as a radiation uh, unit in radiology. So basically nine ranking an hour is the equivalent of 90 millisieverts an hour, or essentially like nine CT chests per hour. So that's quite a big amount of radiation. I'm trying to remember in the Chernobyl episode what they said, how many rankings an hour Chernobyl reactor core is producing around that area. I remember being something insane. Either way, this is a lot of radiation to be just standing next to while you're turning this machine on and off. And we're going to go even further. I couldn't imagine it will be reaching this far. I mean, think about his neighbors who are just, I don't, I don't know if he has any neighbors. It looks pretty, you know, solo out there in this one house. But if there are neighbors, they may be experiencing some of this radiation too, which makes this experiment Wildly unsafe, but we knew that already. Don't worry, we have no neighbors. Brain huh. is boiling. They have no neighbors. Don't worry. So no one will be hurt here. Yeah, nobody will be hurt but them. And keep in mind here, they're not going to experience any of the effects of this radiation in the short term, probably. They'll probably experience some stochastic effects or increase their percentage of getting cancer later on down the road, being exposed to this kind of radiation. And I don't know how many times they've run experiments like this. Hopefully this is the last time they ever do this. Let's test our suit. Will it protect us or not? What do we think? Comment below if you think this shield is going to help them or block any radiation. I'm surprised. If it actually is lead, it'll help. If it's not, which I don't think it will be, but we'll see. The radiation is really high anyway. 4,000 microrangians. Lean. It lets the radiation through. Oh my gosh. But how? So, the protection worked somewhat, but the lead won't block all x-rays, especially an intense beam coming at them unregulated. All of you are eager to see my toes in the x-ray band. That is going to be risky. Why do they have to do this? Why? Why? Awesome. Now we can move them. That's enough. This is basically just unregulated fluoro. This is essentially my IR procedures I do unregulated at home with a beam just going everywhere and scattering everywhere. Holy moly. Why does he have to use his hand? They already did the foot. Why do they have to do more? 
let's check the shooting distance of this gun. Let's has prepared a special stick. So I think now they're outside, they're gonna try out this x-ray gun in the outdoors and see what it does. I don't know what they're doing, but at least they have a stick to turn it on and off now. I think they got sick of being electrocuted. Turn it off. He's keeping it working. Oh my gosh. Sasha is a slow poke today. And instead of shooting, he radiates us all the time. <laughs> this is so bad. So even outside, this is registering at many meters away from it. So there's nothing kind of for scatter radiation to kind of go off the sides and, and scatter around and cause a false or misreading of this uh, device. But he's still getting a ton of radiation outside this far away. This x-ray machine is just crazy. I, it's, it's funny to me, well it's not funny, but not only are they getting so much radiation, but they're also getting electrocuted by it as well. Basically this is just natural selection at its finest in one video. Again, I'm worried about the long-term effects of this kind of radiation they're experiencing, but we'll never know unless we follow these guys for years. This is some crazy power they're producing. Recently, there was disassembled a huge demographic scanner in a university. So he got this x-ray tube from an actual x-ray machine in a medical facility, and now he's actually going to play with a real x-ray tube. But at least this one has that housing around it, which is what I'm talking about. So there's actually just one window where the x-rays fly through so they can actually gear it in a linear fashion towards the patient rather than they just going everywhere out the room. Now, obviously some x-rays do escape this housing, but it drastically limits the number of x-rays. Use this powerful x-ray to kill birds in the skies. You're gonna see it in the next video. These people need another hobby that isn't this. My skin is burning and it's itching like crazy. Can you measure the temperature? He may have gotten some actual deterministic effects from this x-ray machine, which are immediate effects, which is what we worry about in our business. So sometimes our lawn procedures that take, you know, hours and hours and we produce a lot of radiation focused to one spot of the skin, it can cause some skin burning, almost like a, a targeted, like a square sunburn on the skin from the x-ray tube, or it can also cause epiliation or hair loss as well, among other things, which hopefully this guy doesn't have any of those. All right, so what do we learn today? Let's see, don't play with x-rays because they are not safe. You can get burned by them in multiple ways. There's a lot of meanings behind that. But anyways, hope you all enjoyed this video. There's a little education along with this crazy x-ray building, or homemade x-ray tube. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like this kind of video, I'll do more of them. Otherwise, as always, follow me on Instagram and TikTok, and I'll see you all on the next video.